Hey guys, what's up? So this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about Webpack, React, and Babel. It's so complicated, I understand, to keep up with the latest JavaScript standards. They change all the time. They change sometimes, it feels like, hourly. Um, however, as of the time of this video, so currently June 2016, the most um, up-to-date standard in order to write complex modern-day JavaScript is to use Babel, which is going to compile your JavaScript using the latest standards to work with older browsers. So without Babel, you could use the latest standards, but it wouldn't work in most browsers. So you need Babel to compile that code down to code that works for you. Or you could go through the hard work of doing all the work that Babel does for you, but that would, be, that would not make any sense. Uh, the second thing is that Webpack is now the normal um, modern-day bundler. So like you set up a configuration file with Webpack, and it actually handles all of the compilation of taking all the different imports and files that, that your package needs. Um, and making sure the dependencies are met. With the old days of, of JavaScript, um, what you would typically do, like in this particular page here, is that I would, you would have to add script tags, right? So you add script tags to the bottom of your file, and one script tag has to be on top of another, so it loads first before it gets referenced, otherwise you have those reference errors. So that way sucks of doing things, right? It's much better if you can just say, you know what, I need this file, make sure it's available. Well, Webpack does that hard work for you. In addition to that, you also have uh, React, right? So React uses uh, something called JSX. JSX is similar to JavaScript, but it's actually a subset. It's very similar to something like CoffeeScript or TypeScript. You write in a certain type of format, but then that code has to be compiled down to regular JavaScript in order to be able to work with React. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up all three of those to work fluently with each other, and it's really not as bad uh, actually, you know, it's a pain in the ass to figure out on your own. But if you just watch this tutorial and maybe subscribe to this channel, uh, it'll save you a lot of time. So first things first, let's go into this static folder. This static folder is uh, where I'm actually holding my static files for the application. This is where I want to have all my, baby, basically my Babel code and everything else that, that is going to uh, exist here. One of the things you need to do is you need to have Node.js installed on your machine because Node.js allows you to use NPM. So if you've never heard of NPM, it's a package manager. It's been around for a long time, but Node um, it supplies it with, with its install. So that way when you write NPM, it's going to know what you're talking about. So I could say NPM init. init is a command that's going to build a JSON file. JSON is JavaScript object notation. And it's basically like XML, but it's JavaScript's version of, of being able to define data in a predictable way. And it really just is a JavaScript object using key value pairs. So in this case, um, the init, when I ran the init command, it's going to ask me a few things. It asked me for the name of my project, so I'll just call it hipster. I'll give it a version. Hipster, I'll say hipster code library. That is for hipster code for my website. Uh, entry point doesn't really matter. Just put, um, I'll put my name on here, but... Uh, for all this other stuff, just you know, just hit, hit enter to just accept it. Okay, so now that it's done that, if we look inside of our file, I have this package.json file that was created for me, along with the information that was put in there. All right, the next thing we need to do in order to get Babel installed, along with uh, all the latest Babel crap, um, you need to go ahead and go to the command line, and we're going to run npm install. Babel Loader, Babel Core, Babel Preset ES 2015. ES 2015, guys, is uh, JavaScript 6.0. So JavaScript 6.0 was the name that they had originally gone with, but now they're calling it ECMAScript 2015 or JavaScript 2015. Uh, but either way, it's the latest standard uh, JavaScript that doesn't work in your browser, except for maybe Chrome. Um, and then there's this Babel preset React and then save dev. So I wanted to do save dev is actually going to save all of these uh, projects within my uh, config. So when, when this installs, you're going to see um, that by using save dev as opposed to just save um, or as opposed to installing things globally, it, it is going to put it in one specific specific section of the config file. The reason why you don't want to install things globally especially things like Webpack or Babel, is that you may update those projects and they may break um, other dependencies. Like you might have plugins that rely on a specific version of Babel or a specific version of Webpack or whatever it may be. You don't want to 
you don't want to mix all that junk up with your other projects. So try to avoid installing things globally if you can. Now, now that we've installed that, let's do uh, another install save dev version of Webpack. Alright, once this is done here, Webpack is going to be a relatively big project, so it's going to take just a few moments. But once this is done, I want to show you something. If you type Babel, you're like unrecognized internal, why the hell doesn't it work? You just installed it, right? Well, the problem is, is that we installed it locally, and we didn't install it globally, so your computer has no idea what the hell Babel is. Unless you actually added a path reference to the specific location where Babel is installed, it's not going to know what it is. But you don't have to deal with the paths and all that horse shit. So I'm going to show you how to do this in the npm config to avoid that, that hassle. In your npm config, you have these scripts. And if you type inside these scripts, you can put a actual argument, so your key, and then Babel, and I just simply say Babel. I'm going to do the same thing with Webpack. So all I'm simply doing is uh, is telling NPM when when I say Babel or I say Webpack, that's what I mean. So when I say NPM uh, NPM run Babel, since we've added that to our config file, NPM since we ran it that way now knows that we tried to execute a Babel command. Now we got some errors and stuff because we didn't supply the proper information, but that's fine. So. If you wanted to run Babel or Webpack or any other dependency that NPM installs for you, you can just add the scripts to the scripts section there so that way it can execute, but you have to execute it by saying NPM run. All right, now that you've done that, we need to go ahead and create a webpack.config.js file to use with Webpack. So we're going to say webpack.config.js. All right, so inside here, um, this is where things are going to get a little complicated, and I want to go ahead and um, I want to copy all this crap in, so that way I don't mess anything up. And then you guys can just you guys can just copy this. So if you pause the video, copy all this stuff into your computer, and I'll explain each section here. Um, so. This path is, a, is using Node's built-in ability to recognize the path because the output file, we're going to have a bundle.js. And then we're going to have an entry, which is going to be our app.js. So basically, all of our development is going to be done inside app.js. But then once we're done, when we compile things using Webpack, and it con con converges everything that app.js needs, including jQuery or any other modules or anything that you're using, it's going to create one big-ass bundle.js file. And that way, in your script, uh, your HTML page, you're going to have just one reference, and that's it, bundle.js. You don't have to worry about re you know, referencing stuff in a certain order and all that crap. This will just handle it for you. This test means if it matches either JS or JSX, then to compile it using Babel's loader. Um, this says exclude node modules because Babel will try to compile everything inside the, the root directory that you provide, but it's going to skip anything in node modules because you do not want that being compiled down. It would actually make things quite a bit slower. And then this presets is saying use the latest standards, the 2015, the ECMAScript 6.0. So if you start writing stuff at ECMAScript 6.0 style, it will compile it down to older versions of you know just plain JavaScript that will work in older browsers. And then this says React. So if we're writing some React code like JSX, that this is going to know, hey, I'm dealing with JSX, and let me compile this down to regular JavaScript. All right, so now that all that has been done, Let's go ahead and create our app.js file, which we're going to put right into the root directory because that's where it's going to look for app.js right here. So let's create the new file. We'll call it app.js. Inside app.js, let's go to uh, the React. Um, let me see. React. Uh, all right. And just and before I even do that, I'm going to go to React to download a copy of their example. Um, but I want to show you the reference file that this is being included. So I already have this uh, this locally running website, which is going re to reference that bundle JS file. And I can show you if I if we view source down at the bottom, you can see that this thing is 
referencing bundle.js, right? There is no bundle.js yet because we haven't run our first command to actually take everything from app.js and move it to bundle.js, but eventually we're going to do that and bundle.js will be found. So let's go ahead and create inside the bundle.js. If I went over to React's tutorial page, I'm just going to copy this one section where it builds a basic, um, a basic component here using React. And I want to show you something where um, where we're, we're saying react dom dot render instead of content I actually want to say quiz because if we looked inside my HTML page you can see that I have a div ID named quiz and not content so that's actually where I want to attach this component in react so now app.js is using this uh, JSX code which isn't valid JavaScript it needs to be compiled down to JS so we put it right inside of our app.js file and I want to show you um, in order to be able to, um, well, I'm going to show you an example of how we use modern day JavaScript, like the import statement. So import, um, in the newest JavaScript standards allow you to import objects that you need. You can see that we're using React, right? So we need to actually import React. And this is JavaScript 6.0 syntax that isn't supported in the browsers yet. But I could say import React. Um, import react uh, and I say from and then this is going to be in double quotes or single quotes and I'll say react now since we have react installed there should be no problem there uh, but one thing that we do need to do is that the newest versions of react as of the time of this video they separated out the DOM so anything that has to do with DOM rendering or anything they have a new project which they call react DOM so we need to actually install that with npm config or npm install we're going to say npm react DOM save dev so just like we've installed everything else we need to use this react dom it needs to be there so we're installing it now all right so now that that's installed we need to do the same thing we need to say import react dom from and we'll say react dom and you know i like single quotes here it just seems cleaner for some reason um so there we go it's now now um everything should work just fine so if i go to uh the command line i need to say npm run webpack now webpack is automatically going to look for the webpack.config json file that we just created so it's going to look for it it's going to see it and it's going to use all of these settings that we have inside the web config including hey what am i looking for app.js okay and then what am i outputting okay bundle.js and you can see that it actually ran in our command line uh, looks like we did run into an, an error. Oh, okay, we, it looks like we need to install React. Maybe I didn't install React. Uh, but you can see it looked for React. It couldn't find it. Um, all right, and then, uh, but it did create a bundle.js file over here. So let's go ahead and let me, um, let me make sure we install React here. I, I thought it was installed already. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. All right, so so that's that. Let me try to run the compile. Uh, I keep pulling up the wrong. Let me try to run this one more time. Run Webpack. All right, so that worked without error. Uh, now we have this big bundle JS file. So now we have bundle JS, and now if I go over to my project over here and I refresh, you can see hello world, I'm a comment box. So we now have in one bundle.js file, it's gonna be one big ass file, we have everything we need for this project to operate. And we used ECMAScript 6.0 standards, so the latest standards in JavaScript that aren't supported. We used JSX, which isn't even valid JavaScript, which got compiled down to regular JavaScript. And all that stuff got put into one file, so we don't have to deal with multiple JavaScript files. We have one, and that's this bundle.js file. So, you know, I mean, this is better to view it this way. So if I go down here and I go to bundle.js, open a new tab, you can see that bundle.js, because we're using uh, Webpack and everything else, it created this humongous file. But this humongous file does a ton of work for us, and we could actually minify that as well. 
Um, and I think Babel or even um, Webpack allows you to minify. I'm not 100% sure. We may have to use Gulp for that. But either way, um, you can minify that down so it's a lot, it's a lot smaller. But um, it's going to handle a lot of headaches. Now, one of the headaches that you're going to deal with is you're like, okay, well, you know what? Let me update my my uh, comment box here, and I want to change the text, right? So I'm going to say our text has changed. Okay, we go back to our web page, and we look at this, and we see, okay, we got the same shite. Why? Oh, because we have to compile again. So every time you make a change, you have to compile. That sucks, right? Because then you have to, it's one extra step for every little thing you have to do. So, so that blows. We don't want to do that. But you can see once I compile it, the new changes take effect. All right, our text has changed. Let me also try to, I want to do this screen draw thing. Check this out. Boom. What is this? That doesn't work very well at all. This is like, oh, you know what? Here's a line. There you go. Boom. How do I clear this shit? I've actually never used that. I should probably uh, practice that. But anyway. So that's pretty cool. I've actually never used my screen draw capabilities on, on this before. But anyway, you can see the text has changed, right? So how do I make this set up so that we can just go ahead and compile this thing on the fly every time we change it? Uh, that would be better, right? Because then you don't have to go in and make that extra step. Well, all we have to do is go back into the webconfig.json. Uh, where we have this here, we're going to say, um, uh, what is the command? We're going to say just simply watch equals true. Make sure you have a comma there. And now by adding this watch equals true, and if we run webpack, you can see that it's actually going to not hang, but it's going to continue to run. So basically it's going to endlessly listen for any sort of changes. So you see how it doesn't exit out. So it's a, hey, you know, we made the change, but now I can go in and I can make changes on the fly to my JSX code. This mother F has changed and now if I save the file because it's being watched I refresh and you can see this mother f has changed so let me use my little screen drawer thing one more time boom awesome yeah this thing sucks anyway that's awesome that it's changed so Please subscribe to this tutorial. Hopefully I saved you guys a lot of time. This is how you get started with React, Babel, Webpack. This is the latest stuff that you need to be dealing with. Don't worry about Grunt and Require JS and Node. And don't worry about any of that stuff. Start writing your apps this way. Start using the apps uh, in import statements, you know, like so uh, you just need to use uh, the imports like we did at the top here. This is all the latest JavaScript stuff. This is where JavaScript's headed. So please subscribe to this channel if you guys want more content like this. Thank you for watching. Have a good day and bye.